All right, good morning everyone. Welcome back to This Family Life. And today's video is going to be another in our grocery tips and tricks series. So I know I've kind of slacked on these the last couple of weeks helping my parents get moved and everything, but it doesn't mean I've slowed down on coming up with ideas for them. I just need to get them filmed and get them out to you guys. So I apologize for that. And I know that several of you have been enjoying these videos and I appreciate you tuning in for them. So I do want to keep bringing you that sort of useful content. And my goal for these videos is once my mom gets here, I would like at least once a month to have my mom in the video with me so that you can get a little bit of a varying perspective, okay? So my mother is the one that raised me to be how I am now. Uh, but we aren't exactly the same on our grocery shopping style. So I think that'll be interesting to show you the differences between how she does things and how I do things and who's more budget oriented. And um, it'll be interesting to see how that goes. So today's video is going to be five grocery questions that I've had turned in by viewers like you. And so if you have grocery questions, please always feel free to turn those in. It can be on videos. It can be, uh, I have an email address just for this channel that's in every video description. You can go there and you can send me any sort of grocery related questions that you would like to see on the grocery tips and tricks series. And I'll be happy to try to address those in the videos. I don't think I really need these sunglasses yet. I was a little worried that I would with that sun streak kind of behind me but um, it's not so bad yet. I don't have my glasses, they're in my car. I, I have my glasses on. It's early in the morning. I do have my coffee here. Um, I'm a community coffee drinker. Let me know in the comments what uh, coffee you enjoy. I like the community coffee breakfast blend and I really enjoy the community coffee Christmas blend. So when it comes, up, comes out um, a little bit later this year, I'll be stocking up on it again. So the number one question that I get asked is what should my grocery budget be? Okay, that's really hard for me to answer because I don't know your finances, I don't know your debt, I don't know what bills you're trying to pay, I don't know how many kids you have at home. There's a lot of unknown variables there, okay? So I can tell you we are a family of four. We have two kids. We have one teenager and one preteen, so they are uh, 15 and 9. The boy is nine, but he eats just as much as the teenager does at this point. But we both work, we both make a good income, and yet we keep our grocery budget relatively low. So you see the YouTubers that go out and they spend like a thousand dollars on a grocery haul. I could do that, but we prefer to spend our money in other ways. So that's why I'm frugal in areas that I can be to open up money to be fun in other areas and yet still be relatively comfortable, right? And so we like to travel. We like to at least once a year go on a nice big trip because we work hard. <laughs> we both work very hard in our day in day out jobs. So it's nice to be able to get away at least once a year and go on just an amazing trip with our kids and just put it all away for a little while. We like to drive nice cars. So that's a priority to us. We both drive relatively far to go to work and we both need reliable transportation. My husband does a lot of driving for work, so he claims mileage for that. And so we want cars that we know are reliable. We want cars that we know have, you know, full coverage maintenance wise on them. If anything goes wrong, it's gonna get fixed. That's important to us. So it depends. I mean, it depends where, and, and also we don't have a lot of debt. We, we pay off everything because we, I mean, we have a house payment, we have car payments, but other than that, we don't have a lot of debt. But what I can tell you is that the USA average, so I looked this up online, uh, relatively what I found, there are varying opinions out there, but most things that I found said that 150 to $300 per month per person is the average spent in the United States. So if you had a family of four, you would multiply that. So four times whatever you're spending. So if I was spending for four at the $300, that would be $1,200 a month in groceries. I can't even imagine going back to spending that kind of money on groceries because we used to do that. We used to just go to the store and buy a ton of stuff all the time and yet we never had anything at home. And now that we've learned to do things the other way, we spend lots less, lots less, but we have lots more. It's crazy. Um, so you need to kind of look backwards 
and see what you're already spending. Until you know where you're at, you're not gonna know where you should go, okay? So what have I been spending? And then how much do I think I can cut off of that? And try to do it in increments or try to do it slowly. Don't try to do it all at once. That's gonna be too hard. So if you're currently spending $500 a week, try to go to $400 a week. And then once you get to $400 a week, see if you can get it to $300 a week. And keep going down until you find that point where you're like, I can't go any further than this. Okay, that's that's a good starting point. Where can you get to? And then start trying to find new ways to get creative from there. So that's kind of what we did is like, I was like, let me see where I can get as comfortable to. Um, I think I started at like probably $200 a week was where I felt comfortable. And that was probably down from like $400 a week. And then I started finding the ways to get creative, finding the ways, finding the ways. And I'm talking about like starting my prepper pantry. I'm talking about starting utilizing freezers, reverse meal planning, all those things we talk about on the channel. So you also need to test it out and see if that budget works for you. Are you able to stick to it? If you're not able to stick to it, you're going to have to adjust. And that's where I'm at right now. So the $50 a week was just a challenge to myself. Okay, the $341 a month was a challenge to myself. Can I do this? Can I do it for the year? And I've been hit and miss with it, especially lately. It is getting very, very difficult lately to stick to that kind of budget. And so I may need to adjust that. And I'm kind of just holding off till 2024 to make that decision. Also focus on reducing food waste in your own home. That's going to help with your grocery budget. You're going to have to learn how to utilize leftovers to make them into fresh meals. Or you're going to have to learn to eat leftovers or make sure you're cooking things that can be used into something else. I mean, it's hard to take a lasagna and turn it into something else. So you either have to learn to cook a smaller lasagna if you're not going to eat it all or cook the same amount of meat, make a lasagna, freeze a lasagna or cook the same amount of meat and use part of it in the lasagna and part of it in tacos so that you've got another meal ready to go. Give me one second, my son is out here. All right, sorry about that. Axton wanted to know where the honey buns were for breakfast. I bought one box of honey buns last week and the kids have really been enjoying that. So um, question number two that I get asked a lot is what is the best plan for someone that's new to trying this? What's, what's the best plan? I don't really have a plan. Um, sorry, <laughs> I hate to say that. Um, I don't. I, I went into this blindly, okay? So I have not like perfected this either because it's a week to week challenge. But the, the top tip, this is kind of going to be the top tips I can give you on how to get started. Um, number one is figure out what your budget is because you're going to have to know that first. Um, and that may take you a little bit of time. For me, it took no time because I just pulled a number. I was like, you know, we're spending like X amount of dollars now, um, let's do $200 a week. I think we went from either four or $500 a week to $200 a week. That was last year. And then this year I was like, no more, because I still felt like it could be so much better. And that's when I just decided, I'm just gonna go to $50 a week and I'm gonna go to $341 a month. And that's gonna be what it is. Now that was a little crazy, um, especially taking into account inflation, uh, shrinkflation, and all the things that have been going on. Like if you've shopped clearance meat lately, you have to know which stores to go to because if you, you used to could go to Kroger and get clearance meat and get amazing deals and anymore you can't. It's not even worth looking at at Kroger, at least not at my Kroger, but I found that my Brookshire's is actually the better place to go for clearance meat. So you kind of have to learn, okay, you have to figure out your budget. You have to learn where to shop. You have to learn how to shop those loss leaders in the ad. That is a big one. Stocking up on things when they are at their lowest price so that you have them when they're at their highest price. So learn a meal plan. And when I say learn a meal plan, it's learn to reverse meal plan. Don't start with, I need all of these ingredients to make these meals. Start with, I have all of these ingredients. Here's the meals I'm gonna make. That's a big one. Um, utilize those leftovers. Okay, and start to stock a prepper pantry. And so you're gonna do that through your loss leaders, you're gonna do it through clearance items, uh, things that you can stock up on. So this week, I'm trying to think, it's been a week, y'all. It has really been a week. What I stocked up on this week, I stocked up on hot dogs because we are going into cooler weather finally in Texas. We're gonna be out here on the patio a lot more. So hot dogs were on sale for 99 cents a package as long as you bought five or more. I bought five, they all went in the freezer. That's all stock up. 
I bought hamburger meat because any more hamburger meat's like $4.99 a pound. It is so high and it was on sale for $2.99 a pound. So I got 10 pounds of hamburger and honestly, I'm tempted to go back and buy 10 more. I just wasn't sure if I had the freezer space for it. So you just kind of have to learn the prices in your area and you have to learn when it's a good deal. And when it's a good deal, jump on it if you can. You, if you, if you have to, if you have to stick to a budget and you say, all I have is this amount of money. I have $75 and that's all I have. I cannot go over that. Then see if you can spend maybe 50% of it on those lost leader items, okay? If you can't, it's okay. It's okay. The deals will come back around. That's one thing I've learned because I, I still to this day feel like, oh, I got to go get it. I got to go get that deal. And then I remember it's going to come back around. It always does. Don't panic. If you can't buy something when it's on sale, don't panic. It will be back. It may just be a little while. And I've also just learned how to go without certain things. I love Le Sure Peas, the little baby sweet peas. I love them. They're my favorite but they're sky high. It's like $3.29, I think, a can the last time I was at the grocery store. So I'm just not eating peas. And honestly, I'm okay. You know, I'm not gonna die because I didn't have peas. So those would be my tips to you is learn your prices, learn your budget, start prepping your pantry, you know, start utilizing from your pantry. You're gonna be okay. It's gonna take a little while. It's not gonna happen overnight. What I have didn't happen overnight. And I promise you it's not going to. Like, I mean, I guess if you have unlimited resources, you can go to the store and buy a bunch of food and stock your house with it and have a proper pantry. But I mean, if I have tons of money, that's not my priority. This is a priority for me uh, for a completely different reason. Mm. Um, so how can I easily save money? That's, that's another question I get a lot. It's like, can you just make this easy? Just make it easy because I, y'all have heard me say, like I utilize a spreadsheet to track everything. Um, I keep notebooks, all sorts of stuff, right? Can you just make it easy? I can, I can make it easy. Um, you just have to find the method that works for you. I'm, I'm the person, I'm old school paper and pen and I'm a little bit of new school and I like to keep an Excel spreadsheet as well. So that's just, that's just the method that works best for me. So what I would say on how to make it easy is comparison shop and check the sales often. So comparison shop, know your numbers. Um, if you're not sure that something is a good deal, I've done this a lot at Brookshire's. If I'm not sure that like pork loins being buy one, get one for a penny is a good deal, I'll look and see what the regular price is at Walmart or Kroger or HEB. Um, and then I can kind of gauge, is that a good deal or is that really not a good deal? And nine times out of 10, when I go do things like that, because I'm unsure about this item over here, it turns out somewhere over here is a better deal anyways. So don't be afraid to look it up. We all pretty much have the internet or phones or computer. We have something somewhere that we're using because you're watching YouTube right now. So even if it's at the library or anything, utilize that time, compare us to shop a little bit. Make sure you're utilizing rebate and coupon apps. So you've got like Shopmium that's coupons. You, it used to be coupons.com, it's Shopmium now. There's Checkout 51, there is Ibotta, Fetch, Maryfield. There's a ton of different rebate apps and there's even rebate apps and coupon apps for online shopping. So figure out which ones are gonna work best for you. There's a few links in my description box that'll give you like some bonus money on I believe Fetch and Ibotta. Um, I'm not sure if I've ever put one in there for Maryfield or Shopium. I will try to get that updated when this video comes out so that it'll start appearing in the description box. So sign up for those and utilize them. In the limited amount of time that I've been using Ibotta, which is probably now about two and a half years, something like that, I've saved over $2,000. That's how much money they've refunded to me just for grocery shopping. So that's, you know, money in my pocket and it's money I've used for lots of different things. Uh, for clothes, for a KitchenAid mixer, or like I pull it out and I spend it on different things that I want because this is my job. I look at it as like, this is my second job is saving money on groceries. So that money then becomes like fun money for me. Or this year, what I started doing is just rolling it back into the grocery budget. So you can do it either way, whatever works best for you. Um, comparison shop within the store. So what that means is different brands, fresh versus frozen figure out what your smartest options are. Okay, so strawberries might be 
$4.29 for a carton of strawberries, but you might be able to get a huge bag of frozen strawberries for $2.99. And if you're using them for smoothies or baking in a cake or something like that, then it's not gonna matter. I would go with the frozen strawberries, okay? Um, another example might be canned goods. A lot of people don't know, but a lot of canned goods are canned in the same factory and just have different labels on them. So it may be that, you know, great value green beans are 89 cents a can or Del Monte or a dollar 49 a can. We have found we like them just the same. It's not a problem for us. And so, I mean, you're gonna season them and cook them anyways. It's gonna be like you like them. So just try, try and see. There are some store brand stuff we don't like. Um, one of them being like store brand hamburger helper. We're not big fans of hamburger helper anyways, but the store brand, you get a little less quality on the cheesy goodness and stuff. And it's, it's not something that we like. So you'll figure out which ones you like and which ones you don't like. And then make sure to look for those markdowns and clearance areas in your store. I'm gonna have a sip of coffee here. Have a sip of your coffee too. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. I use, I told you the Breakfast Blend Community Coffee. I use Dunkin' Dunkin' Extra, Extra Creamer. I think it's just called Dunkin' Extra, Extra Creamer. And the Coffee Mate Kahlua Creamer. Good stuff. Um, so I always do this. I always do this. I visit the produce area where the clearance stuff is, see if there's anything I can use or freeze there. Then I go around to the little deli section and I look for like pre-sliced lunch meats and cheeses and pizzas actually are a big one. Like the Home Chef pizzas at Kroger, I get those on clearance all the time. Um, I'll go to the bakery and look at the little pre-sliced stuff. Uh, sometimes they will have some deals there. Then I'll check the clearance meat, which like I told you at Kroger is usually a no-go, but I always check it just in case and I always this is the same stuff I check at other stores and then I go back by the dairy is where they have like the big racks with um day-old bakery goods and so I'll check those as well just to see what I want to utilize then or what I want to freeze so it is worth learning where those areas are in your store when the markdowns come out and uh putting some of those as well so the next one is what is an expiration date? <laughs> so do I need to pay attention to expiration dates? I would say do your own research, learn when your food should be disposed by, okay? I am not going by expiration dates. I haven't for a long time. Now I do on milk. I'm not willing to risk getting sick off of milk, but eggs last longer than the date on the package. So, to, you know, figure it out. Um, that's what I had to do. I hate to say figure it out, but you'll figure it out, okay? You'll learn when eggs are good and when they're not good. Um, almost everything, everything that I have that has gone out of date has been perfectly fine. And there are lots of prepper videos out there that will tell you about how those are just dates that have to be put on there by the, I believe it's the USDA, um, to let you know when food is best by. So, it's going to be up to you to decide how far you're willing to push that or how far you're not willing to push that. With canned goods, I'm willing to push it quite a bit further, so I'm not so worried about it. Uh, baked goods, like your cake mixes and things like that, I'm willing to push it. It's, it has no wet ingredients in it. It's dry ingredients, so you're adding the wet ingredients to it anyways. Um, so like cornbread stuffing mix, I'm willing to go past the date on that. So there's lots of things I'm willing to go past. And then there's things that I don't want to go past. And there's reasons on that. Like cooking oils can get funky if they are too far past their expiration date. So, but I'm not going to throw it out. I'm going to check it. If it's fine, I'm going to use it. If it's gone bad, then I'm going to throw it away. So my, I guess my advice on an expiration date would be that is a, <clears throat> excuse me, government required best buy date. That's when it's going to be the most flavorful it's going to be at its peak, right? By that date. After that date, the quality could go down, but in my experience, we have not experienced that. So we have had no problems. In fact, the only time I've ever had a problem with an ingredient in the kitchen was eggs that were still in their date. And when I cracked them into my bowl, they were black. And so that's the only time I've ever had a problem. And that wasn't due to anything being expired. It was just a problem. And so cakes and things like cake mixes, cookie mixes, they may not rise as well, but you can add a little bit of a rising ingredient to it. It's not gonna hurt it. It's not gonna make them over rise if you, if you do that. So it's okay. 
it's okay. You do not have to throw food out on the expiration date. In fact, here's what I would say. If you are going to throw food out on its expiration date, instead of throwing it out, join a local free Facebook page. Not, not like a buy, sell, trade page, but a free for all um, charity type page where people give things away. Put all your expired food together, list it on there, tell them, hey, this just recently expired, but I'm not comfortable eating expired food. Does anybody want it? I've done this before and every time I do it, someone comes and picks it up the exact same day. So I promise you, I promise you someone will use it. Don't throw it away. I promise someone will use it. So last is, should I be buying in bulk in order to save money? Because you see me shop at Sam's, so you want to know how, how that's working out for me. So what I would say is look at the unit price, okay? Look at the unit price there compared to the unit price at your regular store. Again, you can do that online. You can get on the Kroger app while you're in Sam's and check out the unit prices or, or whichever store you shop at normally just to make sure you're not overspending compared to the regular store. Just because it's a bulk package doesn't mean they're giving you a better deal. It's convenience. It's convenience because now you've got a lot of it, but make, check those unit prices. Make sure you're actually getting the best deal. If you're not, just go ahead and pick up um, a few at your regular store or just pick up one at a time at your regular store. Um, just keep in mind that those unit prices can go up they're probably not likely to go down. So if you are at Sam's and you see the unit price is 78 cents an ounce and you pull it up on Kroger and it's 68 cents an ounce and you're like, cool, I'll go ahead and go to Kroger for that. Stock up because it may go up and beat the price at Sam's the next time. So if you're looking for the best price, get it while it's at, while it's at the best price. Um, bulk purchases do allow fewer trips to the grocery store. So you're taking those things out of your everyday budget. So if you find it hard to stick to a budget and it's easier for you just to go ahead and get those things out of the way up front, maybe it's a better deal for you. I find the things that I go to Sam's for is more like fun stuff for my family, okay? That's where I'm buying like the bulk snacks for kids' lunches or I'm buying um, the big baking trays that I like to use or oils. I usually get my oils at Sam's. It's a better deal there. Um, the big things of like pancake mix to utilize to make breakfast to freeze for them, different things like that. So I don't do a lot of day in day out shopping at Sam's. I don't do a bulk grocery haul at Sam's to last me the month. So I really couldn't tell you how much you might or might not save doing it that way. And I'm not going to lie to you because I don't do it that way. But I would say make sure that you can use the quantity you purchased in a timely manner. So if I go to Sam's and I buy, you know, 86 rolls of toilet paper, I'm not worried about 86 rolls of toilet paper expiring or ever going bad. It's toilet paper. It doesn't matter. Same thing with paper towels, cooking pans, all of that kind of stuff. But if you're going to go to Sam's and you're going to buy, you know, an 80 count thing of cheese sticks, are you going to be able to go through 80 cheese sticks before they go bad? In my house, yes, my daughter takes them in her lunch. My husband takes them in his lunch. That's two a day. They're going to be gone in no time. Plus it's an easy like snack, a healthier snack than candy or cookies or whatever in the afternoon. Um, fruit, you know, if, if I buy this big bulk thing of peaches, am I going to be able to use them or preserve them before they go bad? So I'm not talking about, you know, expiration dates because we just talked about expiration dates and how you could probably go over on them. But if it's something that you think you might not use all of it, don't buy it in bulk because you are wasting money. You're going to throw it away. One of the things I want to learn to do when my mom gets back is how to can. I have never canned anything. I bought a pressure canner while she lived in Kentucky, but I haven't used it. And so that's one of my goals. My mom knows how to pressure can. And so then I can buy more things in bulk, uh, like the produce wise, because I'll know whatever the kids don't use, we have time to turn it into apple butter or jam or jelly or, you know, peach jelly or whatever. And that's only when the produce is on a good deal. I still wouldn't buy it on a bad deal and turn it into anything. So, and I want to get a freeze dryer at some point. That's my newest thing that I want to do. Um, I think that would be a lot of fun and it would be interesting to make, you know, stuff around here, but they are expensive. I think they're like two grand and there's no two grand in the budget right now. 
looking for one of those. I can promise you that. So anyways, that is the five questions that I had to answer for you guys today. And I hope you found some nugget of helpfulness in them. Um, I know it's really hard when you're starting out and you just want someone to say, here's the directions and follow these directions. And you don't get that. It's hard. And there are videos out there that will tell you like step-by-step, step, here's how you do it. However, they're not taking into account real life. They're not taking into account that everyone's different and not every method is gonna work for every person. So it is strictly trial and error, guys. And I'm sorry, I wish I could say it wasn't, but it is. And you would experience the same thing no matter what. If I was telling you how to pay off debt, things are gonna come up and you're gonna have setbacks and you're gonna have roadblocks. It's the same way with saving money in the grocery store. There are setbacks on a weekly basis. You go to the store and items aren't there that you plan to pick up. There are roadblocks as in there are shortages and you just can't get stuff. So it's just trial and error. It's, it really is. And like I said, even myself, I'm still on a learning curve too. Like the $50 a week was a fun challenge in the beginning of the year. And I thought, you know, with inflation and everything, it would just be fun to give people a peek that you could still do this. But it's getting hard. It's getting really, really hard. And I would honestly say that my starting point for a week now is more like $75. And even that's a little hard to hit. And that's how far we've come just since January when I started this. I would say I've seen a 50% increase in what I need to spend. And so I'm, I'm kind of waiting till the end of the year because I do want to go back and figure out like how many weeks we hit the $50, how many weeks we didn't hit the $50 and let y'all know, like how did we do overall for the year? Were we able to stay in it like 60% of the time or 70% of the time, where did we fall? But the goal's just saving money. The goal's doing better. If the goal is shopping smarter, not harder. The goal is less trips to the grocery store. Um, there's lots of things that go into it. So that is what I've got for you guys today. I really do hope that you found some helpful information in there. Please make sure to like and subscribe to the video. And again, if you ever have any grocery related questions for the tips and tricks series, make sure to leave them in the comments or feel free to email them to me if you don't want everyone to see that you're the one that asked the question. And I'll be happy to address those in future videos. So I will see you guys in the next one. The next one, we're gonna talk about inflation in a big way. Um, just stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. So I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye.